HanselMinutes.com. It's Hansel Minutes, a weekly discussion with web developer and technologist Scott Hanselman, hosted by Carl Franklin. This is Lawrence Ryan announcing show number 151, recorded live Tuesday, February 17, 2009. Support for Hansel Minutes is provided by Telerik RAD Controls, the most comprehensive suite of components for Windows Forms and ASP.NET Web applications. Online at www.telerik.com. And by .NET Developers Journal, the world's leading .NET developer magazine. Online at www.sys-con.com. In this episode, Scott talks with Ward Cunningham and James Shore about fit and fitness. Hi, this is Scott Hanselman, and this is another episode of Hansel Minutes. I'm here at the Open Agile Northwest Conference, and I'm sitting down today with James Shore, an Agile practitioner and author of uh, The Art of Agile Development. Hi, Scott. Hi, how's it going, sir? And I'm also here with Ward Cunningham, inventor of the wiki and CTO of aboutus.org and one of the first practitioners of, uh, of patterns and bringing patterns to the world. Thank you, sir. Ah, uh, it's great to be here. So uh, I think that we should talk about fit and fitness. And I think that, uh, although you, sir, are looking very fit and, uh, uh, lately, and, and I understand you're doing a lot of bike riding, the fit and fitness that we're talking about today is a little different. So maybe one of you could familiarize us with those terms, uh, for those of the listeners that aren't familiar. Sure. Uh, fit is, uh, well, it's a tool that we're created. So maybe I'll give my perspective and then ask him to talk about it more. Uh, fit is, as I see it, a tool for agile teams to communicate well with their customers. And of course, this can be more than agile teams, but agile teams really focus on communicating well with their customers. Um, fitness is based on fit. Um, and a lot of people use, think of fit and fitness as testing tools, but I think of them as customer communication tools. Yeah. The, the fit, uh, uh, fits a creation, uh, uh, in a short period of time to try to make a reusable framework that uh, captured the essence of what I had done maybe four times over uh, in, in, in the course of uh, uh, different projects needing to do this communication. In the past, I'd done it in, uh, you know, uh, frameworks that address the specific needs of the specific projects and weren't reusable in any way. Uh, and this was an attempt to make something uh, reusable. And, and uh, both uh, Jim and I, and and uh, quite a number of other people have put uh, put a lot of effort into uh, uh, fit, and then uh, combining that with wiki to be a repository of information, and that's uh, fitness. Okay, so to put this in concrete terms, someone uh, this is some software that someone downloads and uh, and uses and puts into their workflow. And this yeah, is- yeah, it would be uh, it would be software. It, it, it it's a, uh, a, a the original was a, was a. a a uh, Java framework and probably, what was it, 10 classes or something like that, maybe 15 Mm -hmm. classes, so not a very big framework. But more importantly, it established a style of testing, and uh, we had the opportunity to to implement it in multiple languages. So uh, I asked Jim, who was was into uh, .NET uh, much more than I was, to help me translate what I'd done in Java to .NET. And so Jim did the .NET version of the framework. And and the idea is if somebody was converting from Java to .NET, they could save all the tests that they wrote because the tests would be written as a file that uh, that FIT would read. Okay. The the format w- I chose was, uh, was HTML and uh, wanted to put the facts that were going to be the you know the details of the test in uh, in, in in tables, uh, but that left all the space around the tables to describe why you cared about those facts, and that made it a communication tool. Okay, so the prose around the tables is ignored by the tool, and the tables themselves are the the data that drives the test. Yeah, and, and let me give you an example because uh, it's it's hard to describe. I think. Yeah, it's still kind of in the abstract. Yeah, the, I think people people are familiar with unit tests, mm-hmm. and people are understand how to write programs to test things, but. So, so let me just sort of give an example. It's, it's kind of magical what FIT does. And when you first see it, and a lot of people have done this, they get very excited about the possibilities. What you do is you write a document in Word or in Wiki, and it has a bunch of tables in it that say the software behaves this way. And you run it through FIT or FITness, and those tables turn green and red, saying, yes, it runs this way or no, it doesn't. And, um, 
under the covers, it's actually quite simple, but seeing this happen where you've got a document that has pros and it sort of looks like a specification or a requirements document suddenly telling you whether or not it's right or not mm-hmm. um, is really cool. And it's, uh, and um, I think, really interesting. So, so the way I thought about it is, is that we write a document that says what we desire. And then what we do is we run fit against the system as built today. And it annotates the document by coloring individual cells, red or green. It says this number is going to come up 55. And if it comes up 55, it'll be green. And if it comes up 57, it'll be red. So what is the language that's in the table? Is it Are these verbs and nouns that are known it, to fit? It, it typically tends to be just facts. So if you were doing a, a financial software, it'd be easy. It'd be dates and dollar amounts and stuff like that. And, uh, you know, if, if maybe you're talking about some kind of financial instrument, you might have to run 10 or 15 cases. So you'll make a table that has 10 or 15 rows, and it'll have as many columns as you need to describe that financial instrument. Uh, if you have a different financial instrument, you make a different table with a different number of columns. And how does this interface with my software? That's what FIT does. FIT would read the table, read the HTML, and then make calls into your software to uh-huh. check those numbers, okay. check the numbers, and then writes a new HTML document that has the annotations, has the color. And, of course, you change your software. Tomorrow you run it again, and you get a different document with different colors because your program has improved. But you wouldn't call this a unit testing tool, or is this? It's, it's not really unit testing. It's like unit testing in the sense that we're going to call the actual objects that are present in the program. Mm-hmm. But you tend to write tests at this level, uh, tests that, that are about the concerns of your customers instead of being about the concerns of your developers. Unit testing is very much about what the API is that the programmers have to live with. Mm-hmm. And in fact, we really want these tests or examples. I prefer to call them examples. Okay. We want these examples of how the program is supposed to behave to be sourced from the customer. I mean, ideally, they're writing it because this is a Word document or, or a wiki document. We want them to write it at best. Uh, in practice, maybe we're just saying, hey, can you give me some examples on the whiteboard? Right. And they're copying those in. Okay. So the difference between fit and fitness, just to be clear for the listener. Mm-hmm. Uh, fit is a command line tool okay. that Ward wrote in Java and then we translated into C Sharp and other people translated into other languages. Okay. Fitness is a wiki package that originally called the Fit command line tool and now integrates its own version of Fit uh, into this wiki package. So the wiki allows you to write your documents, mm-hmm. do version control on them, and then it also has a little run button that says execute this okay. document and annotate it and tell me uh, what's going on in the software. Okay, so if I try to put this into a larger context of all the different families of all the different kinds of tools out there, we've got things like like NUnit and all the XUnit style tools. We've got things like Selenium, also a uh, a, a fit like tool in that you put instructions in um, in tables, but then it drives a web browser. It's much more unit test focused and lives in the browser, but sounds like what you're describing. Uh, we've got the different X spec you know, RSpec and different kinds of specification tools. If I want to make sure that my application is correct and complete, but I have this this uh, cornucopia of tools to choose from, where does fit where does fit fit, uh, and and how do I pick or do I bother at all? Well, that's a really interesting question because uh, earlier Ward and I were talking about what what happened to fit, and I think uh, this is something that as people have struggled with with fit is where does it fit. Um, if you think about the tools you're talking about there, in unit and RSpec, those are programmer testing tools and specifically unit testing tools. Something like Selenium is really an end-to-end acceptance testing tool. Uh, and FIT looks like either of those, but I really see it as a customer testing tool. It's not either one, um, but that's how I see people using it in practice. But I would rather see them use it as a customer testing tool. If there's something that you're having trouble communicating with your customer, like how does a financial instrument behave under certain circumstances, um, you know, that's complicated and it's easy to get wrong. And you might program it correctly and you might have unit tests and that ex- your understanding as a programmer could well be wrong. And you want to understand what it really does. And that's why we want you to talk to your customer, get examples and code those and then execute them. That's my perspective. Yeah, I, I think that's absolutely true. Uh, the, the, the one thing is whenever we're going to have a conversation, if, if developers are going to talk to their customers, they have to find 
some language to talk to each other that is uh, uh, understood by both. And so uh, as developers, we try not to use computer jargon, but as a customer, the customer needs to to be focused and narrow and, and concrete. So we want to get the customer to be specific. So we say, well, don't tell us you want the interest rate formula. Give us some examples of the interest rate formula that we can check because there's dozens of ways to compute interest. And that means that you might actually have to do some interest calculations so that we can see uh, how our understanding of interest calculation is different than yours. And that, that uh, uh, so now to bring this back to the language, you know, you're there sitting, okay, I'm sitting in a spreadsheet. I want to work up a bunch of interest calculations. I, as the customer, can decide how many columns there are for a particular example. You know, maybe I want to include certain uh, date calculation methods, which can, can really follow up, uh, you know, if you're working in what they call 3360 time, you know, which, uh, you know, uh, assumes every month is 30 days, you know, that that's a, a real mind bender there in terms of a certain kind of uh, computer algorithms because uh, every month doesn't have 30 days, you know. So so to do the interest calculation, you can, you know, you need to figure out where which months you're talking about to be able to do that. And, and, and the customer can do that as well as anybody. So you're saying if there are edge cases that are really difficult to express, programmer or not, those edge cases are ultimately best understood by the customer, and they are the ones that should be expressing them in terms of examples. Absolutely. And and we want concrete examples because what I've found uh, training people how to use this tool is when you get these domain experts, these business analysts or, or financial experts or chemists or whoever it is that you have in the room, and you get them talking to each other and they get them talking to the programmers, I've, I've seen two things happen over and over. One is I can't believe the programmers didn't understand this basic thing that's at the foundation of what we've been doing for the last two years. How could they not know this when we're already two years <laughs> into development? And two, what do you mean we're using this to mean that? I thought it meant this. So, the, you know, when you start getting into concrete examples, people – it, it flushes out ambiguity, and the domain experts actually start disagreeing with each other, too. Because a big part of why you see requirements errors in software is that we're trying to take fuzzy domain concepts, translate them into something that's really unforgiving. And when we don't, when we allow that to be fuzzy, programmers fill in the gaps with their expectations and assumptions that may well be wrong and, and often are. Okay. But the, the, but the, the the domain people, the domain experts, the customer in this case, uh, may be thinking about things at a certain level. Uh, one kind of customer may be concerned about, you know, he may he may express his business rules in terms of buttons, and he say, well, the user will type here and then click there, and I expect this to happen. While maybe a physicist is thinking in much more abstract uh, concepts, and uh, fitness is ultimately going to be calling into code, going to be calling into the domain. How do you deal with that pretty significant impedance mismatch? Well, well, one assumption I had is is that they all know how to work Excel, and and that that uh, uh, if we ask them to get concrete, that they're that that uh, Excel is a good way to to do it. Okay. And so, so what we needed is something that could take information that was in that sort of table, and be able to check it against the program. And this is where, uh, uh, you know, I I I'm a fan of object oriented programming. I love objects, and I felt that the objects boundary was the interface. So I need something that could take a quantity that was in a row of a table mm -hmm. and be able to apply that to an object and then get a result back from that object and compare that to some other quantity in the next row of the table or the next column, I guess it would be. And, and, uh, you know, to me that was message sending. So, so I, uh, uh, I wanted, uh, fit the library to be part of the application. In the same way that the user interface is part of the application, but mm. I didn't want to talk to the user interface. I wanted to talk to the same application that the user interface talks to. So I bypass the user interface, talk straight to the application, and that way, uh, you know, and, and unit tests do this too. Sure. But here I'm, I'm using that same interface for doing acceptance tests, and that made sense to me. Hi, this is Scott coming at you from another place in time. Are you looking for an object relational mapping tool for mission critical projects using Link and .NET? I wanted to share with you Genome. It's specifically designed for developing .NET enterprise applications. 
Genome is a mature link integrated ORM tool. It's been employed in numerous large scale projects over the last six years. Genome was created for the .NET platform as opposed to being a port from Java. And it's thrived on platform innovation since .NET 1.0. Genome has supported Link since its CTP release in May of 2006. It offers several unique features such as encapsulation and reuse of Link queries and expressions. You can really fully harness the power of Link while benefiting from your database platform's unique features. Compose complex Link queries, decompose the query logic in your domain model, Link supports all the major database platforms you find in enterprise environments like SQL Server, but also Oracle and IBM DB2. You can find out more about how Genome integrates tightly with Visual Studio and what tools Genome offers to reduce development time at tinyurl.com slash trygenome, G-E-N-O-M-E, where you can also download a free and fully functional trial version. I hope you enjoy it. I wonder if uh, someone is trying to make FIT work for their application, if they might find themselves writing specific code to interface with FIT to make their application FIT-friendly. Well, yeah. In fact, if you start out with FIT, then you tend to build an application that has a lot of, uh, uh, you know, you might call them access points for FIT, or, mm. or I like to think of as, uh, you know, internal modularity. Uh, and and if, if, if you do it that way, then you'll find that uh, FIT is a natural now, there's a lot of kind of awful programs that are, you know, just a hodgepodge and there's no single way to talk to anything. Mm -hmm. and, and the closest we can find to a standard interface is that they all, you know, work through a web browser. And that makes a tremendous pressure to make universal tools that basically operate the browser uh, under remote control. And what that does is that separates you from uh, the objects in question. For example, you can't ask it anything that isn't in the output, you know, whereas, you know, I, uh, when I'm talking to the objects directly, I can ask the object a question that isn't going to be in the output, right? You know, and, and, uh, uh, I can get an answer from it too, because I'll just, I'll just let that object do that for the sake of testing. And, and, uh, you know, that, 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 that is the power of objects. Well, so, you know, objects are kind of, you know, had their day and people are on to other things. And, and, uh, you know, that's a, that's a technique that was important to me. And I think that, uh, you know, it's, it's, uh, it, it's something that, uh, was a little bit of my religion that, uh, you know, hasn't really stuck. Well, has, has fit, has its day, Jane? Well, um, I, so I was for, for a time, I asked, I said to Ward, I, I've been working on the C-sharp version and, um, uh, why, why don't I take over maintenance of the Java version too, and and try to coordinate all this stuff? And and that 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 was several years ago. Mm -hmm. And uh, I have to say, I, I've it hasn't nothing's been happening with Fit for a couple of years. To be quite honest, it's it's it may have had its day. What I've found is that Fit really wants you to think about your code in terms of a domain object layer. So you take the knowledge that your customers have and you want to encode it in domain objects, which is a wonderful way of programming that has just never really caught on except among some of the intelligentsia. Because mm -hmm. um, there are people that I know in the domain, you know, the DDD and some BDD kind of communities that are, that are rabidly enthusiastic about tools like Fit. Yeah, well, domain-driven design is perfect for I – mean, and, it's, and it's a great way. Of oh, programming, Ward is it, snatching it, it, away the well, microphone. I just had to grab the mic, and I it, <laughs> it, it was it was Eric, you know, uh, who, Eric of uh, Eric Evans, uh, you know, who who uh, you know wrote the book mm -hmm. uh, on domain driven. He says, "Look, this you know you're describing here one more time this way you test things. You've got to." get that out there and i said okay i'll get that out there by writing a general purpose library mm -hmm. you know so so yes i'm i'm absolutely aligned with that and i think that's the right thing to do and of course it's a natural fit for people who have who have already drunk that kool-aid but but why isn't uh why isn't catching on i mean uh Companies like Microsoft and others are building in all sorts of, of uh, test test runners and test drivers, and everyone wants code coverage, and everyone wants a red green refactor, but not so much with the with the DDD and the fit and fitness. Yeah, and and it seems that in the teams I work with, it just seems that domain driven design is a foreign way of thinking, and fit. Just like test-driven development will drive the design of your code to more decoupled objects and to uh, entry points in the system, FIT will drive the design of your domain layer. 
And if you don't have a domain layer, it's going to be challenging to use. Um, and my hope would be that people who don't have a domain layer using FIT would learn to create a domain layer and, and do that. But in fact, what has happened um, is that they're turning it into a fairly bad acceptance testing tool through the web. And yes, you can do that with FIT, and it sort of looks like Selenium. And I think Selenium actually was inspired by FIT. I remember hearing from those folks back when FIT was first becoming publicized. Mm -hmm. um, but in order to do acceptance testing through the web, you have to really have sort of a procedural programming language where you say, go to this page, press this button, put this thing in, go in a loop. Here's We're going to log in again, so we need a right. subroutine. Turns out that doing that in HTML tables um, kind of sucks. Yeah. I mean, well, and, and like Ward said, not everything is exposed via the user. Yeah, interface. and 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 it gets very complicated, and it's so it's so complicated. In fact, you need variables, you need loops, you need subroutines. It's so complicated that your customers won't understand it, so they're not writing it anymore. Which brings back brings me back to the kind of the relative simplicity of Excel. I mean, if everything can be expressed in a table of examples, why isn't that exciting? And you're saying it's ultimate because our software designs typically don't support that. Yeah. And and if and if our customers can't understand the fit tests and fit is a tool for improving customer collaboration and really getting communication and understanding between customers and programmers, if they can't understand what we're doing there because we're not using domain driven design, we're going through the web and it's too complicated. Mm -hmm. Why are we using fit? Why don't we just use a procedural programming language and use JUnit or Selenium yeah. or Water or something else. Well, see, now now I'm hearing, uh, Ward, I'm hearing fit is dead, long live fit. Uh, well, well, what's you know, next? Uh, I, I would, you know, I would say that uh, there, there's a couple of things that I did that uh, uh, maybe uh, set the bar too high for fit. One is I wanted it to be uniform across a wide variety of implementations because I saw it as a way for people to have mobility uh, you know, so that they wouldn't get trapped in their own implementation, that they would be able to say, well, we're going to go from Java to .NET or from .NET to, you know, uh, Ruby or whatever, and we're going to take all our tests along with us because our tests are just HTML documents that have a bunch of facts expressed as strings and numbers. Now, to my surprise... Producing a document that has tables with a bunch of facts and strings and numbers turns out to be hard, even here in 2008. Nine. If you, 2009, wait, oh, hey, good. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Yeah, well, yeah, that's so one I'm of my problems. Attention, actually, Steve. Right. Uh, but, 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 you know, if I think about it, if I needed to make a document right now that had nice looking tables in it, I don't have a tool on my computer that'll do it. <laughs> You know, that tables turn out to be, in a WYSIWYG kind of context, yeah. turn out to be a little too hard to do right. And uh, and I just assumed that that was a solved problem. I assumed well, that people could, people could write documents that had tables in them and could maintain them. Not business people. Yeah, gosh, Not darn actual it. suits. Yeah, you know, yeah, you turn that over to your web design geeks, right? You say, oh yeah, make some tables. You know, it's too hard for me. And, and if you can't, if you can't write the language freely, yeah. then saying that we're going to have a communication tool that's based on this language is, is just dreaming. And so, you know, very frustrating to me, but I will say that the ideas, you know, I think there was a, an argument going on early you know, that fit kind of stepped into and it was like, is, 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 is DDD important or, uh, you know, what is the role of automation versus, uh, uh, you know, say, uh, exploratory testing and so forth. And there wasn't anything to point to that says this is a good example of what can be done. And so, uh, I think there's been enough successes with fit. You know, people who say, oh, man, it has transformed the way we write software. Even if it's only one out of every five people who try it have that kind of success. Because those successes happened, it caused people to have another go mm. at writing these frameworks. And I, I, I think, you know, the R spec is interesting. And I think Cucumber is one that really uh, is, is, I guess, a wrapper around R spec. I'm not sure what it even is, but it's, it's something where where you write text files instead of HTML documents, but you get to choose your language very carefully to be understandable. And uh, uh, writing text files is within, you know, the general ability of the tools that come with every computer. And so that it's probably more the way to go. It's, it's, it's a little more 
syntactic. And I think in, in terms of running Cucumber programs, it's, it's uh, uh, you know, if you want to run them through the browser, because what you really care about is, you know, browser anomalies, uh, you can do that too. Uh, so there's a lot of uh, a lot of versatility in the back end, and those wouldn't exist if it weren't for fit, kind of saying here's a space and here's something to do. So now I'm now I'm torn. I want to ask you though, Ward, before, um, as the creator of fit, is fit dead? Uh, I don't think so. Okay. And and I think it's it's what is fit is going to be a small piece of uh, software transition uh, technology. You know, the people who bother to build those tables and recognize them as assets that are worth keeping are, you know, we have to protect their investment. They thought they were going to get an investment and fit will be around for them. Mm -hmm. It's just that it isn't a flashy okay. in any sense. It's, it's like, is there a community that is investing in fit right now? Um, well, in this room, I guess. Well, you know, uh, uh, I'm not investing. Okay. So Jim is fit dead. The dream lives on. <laughs> you're, Fit, I, I, you're I, 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 yes, I'm equivocating. Um, I at one point identified myself as the project coordinator for Fit. I'm no longer doing that. Nobody else has stepped up. Um, there's no T-shirts. There's no T-shirts. Uh, awesome. However, Fitness, which was an early fork of Fit that okay. has the wiki, is continued to maintain. It's maintained by Bob Martin, Uncle hmm. Bob, Uncle at Object Bob. Mentor, yeah. and it is slightly different than Fit. Um, I would love to see more focus on the communication, customer communication side of things. Um, but it is still the same underlying ideas and people who want fit will find a nice polished package over in fitness. Um, so if you're listening to this and you think, wow, that sounds really cool. Go, go check out fitness. If you've been using fit and you want to keep using it, it fits still there. I mean, it hasn't gone away, but, um, I don't know of anybody who's still maintaining the Java and C sharp versions that, uh, Ward and I worked on. So, so, you know, I, le I learned a lesson from this, and, and, and you'd think I would have known it already. Um, I hooked up uh, Fit to uh, a wiki for the purpose of writing a documentation about Fit. But uh, I was convinced that people needed, you know, dozens or hundreds of columns and that Excel was the thing that was going to manage those columns. And so I wanted to be able to take Excel tables and put them into documents and I knew that the table syntax that people were doing in wikis wouldn't stand up to it. Mm -hmm. Well, it turns out I was wrong. It turns out that the the uh, uh, ability to collaborate among developers and uh, customers, and especially among between different customers, that the wiki technology was attractive enough that it was uh, kind of the new ground that needed to be uh, plowed, that there is a, a, a test repository and and uh, it's shared between development and the customer uh, and and that is as simple as wiki, even if it is kind of a pain in the neck to to deal with tables in wiki it's 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 no uh, it's no worse than the the pitiful tools you have in your laptop so so uh, uh, collaboration was more important than the expressiveness of the languages that I wanted people to invent to talk about their problem and I think I mean I, I regret and maybe this is because as a consultant people people call me um, to help them solve a problem uh, so I've seen a lot of cases where people are using fit to do these sort of procedural through the web interface tests. And I regret that because I think the real power here is the domain driven design and the customer collaboration. And, um, even if fit is dead and, and, uh, that we're not seeing a lot of that, that's still necessary. If we're going to create correct software, we still have to understand what our customers need and mean. We still have to do that. So that's, uh, I think that is, fertile ground and we need to keep exploring that i think there are people who are exploring that we need to to keep it keep it going there, there's also a lesson here too is and and that is that uh, uh we've come to the point where we judge software by the community that uh, that supports it mm -hmm. and uh you know i made a uh uh kind of a three month long effort to to build a community of developers and my focus was on breadth you know of languages and not uh you know, uh, uh, you know, not changing it or evolving it. I said, let's hold it still so that all the different developers can get caught up. And that, uh, that wasn't a good community building strategy. 
and uh, 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 people are, you know, people look at fit and they say, well, you know, where's the community? The community seems to be fitness, and uh, uh, you know, so uh, uh, you know, there were there was a fork, and that fork turned out to have a writer strategy than mine. And uh, but does that mean it's dead? No, it means it just. Uh, you know, it just uh, spawned its uh, progeny, and that's uh, that's where the action is. All right. Well, thanks so much, James Shore and Ward Cunningham, for sitting and talking to me about fit and fitness today. Thank you. Yeah, it's a pleasure to be here. All right. And this has been another episode of Hansel Minutes. I'll see you again next week. Mm-hmm.